Welcome to Window on Wall Street, a program that shares information about delayed food sensitivities. Sensitivities that may cause symptoms like headaches, IBS, fatigue, stress, and even ADD or ADHD to mention a few. I'm Dr. Gabriela Cora, your host, and in today's program, we'll be taking viewer questions from patients who've invested in an immuno blood print, a simple blood test that identifies foods which could be the cause of many symptoms. My guest today is Katie Sweetrock. She's a health advisor for Immuno Laboratories. Her expertise is consulting clients after they have completed their blood testing to help implement their new diet program. Hi, Katie. Thank you for being with us today. Thank you. It is my pleasure. Wonderful. Let's go to the first caller. I'm Sam from Pensacola, Florida. I hate to admit it, but I'm a Starbucks addict. I just love coffee, and I drink about four cups a day. Unfortunately, I tested positive for coffee on my immune blood print. Can I make a deal here? If I'm really good and I stick to my plan, can I once in a while have an espresso? What is this person to do? They love coffee. They can't have coffee. Well, first off, I recommend 100% avoidance. So they should not have the espresso, at least for 90 days. It's best, the plan overall it has more success with complete avoidance for those, those 90 days. And after that, they can introduce it back into their diet. So 90 days without coffee. Let's say this person has been drinking two, three, five cups of coffee a day. How should they stop? Well, I really suggest if you're drinking that amount of coffee that you, you consult with your nutritionist or a, your doctor about weaning off the coffee. Stopping cold turkey can, can, can lead you to things like migraine headaches, which are never any fun for anybody who's going off and trying to get healthier. Okay. Is there anything that they could replace coffee with during this transition? Well, it's the caffeine that they're withdrawing from. So if they can find other sources of caffeine, things like tea, green tea, to wean themselves onto while they're transitioning out of it. That will help them in keeping them, the withdrawal symptoms from coming on. Okay. Any replacements in terms of even taste or aroma? Yes, there are some great herbal blends out there that actually taste like coffee and don't actually contain any of the coffee bean, which is the part that they're reactive to. They're commercially available and they often taste great and many people, once they transition onto them, they don't need coffee anymore. So we're talking about two separate things. One is caffeine is addictive, but there are other sensitivities to beans. Correct. So it is the actual protein of the bean that they're reactive to. And then you can become addicted to the caffeine in the, in the actual coffee. So you can, you can get off caffeine by putting, going on to other caffeine substances, but the actual reaction to the coffee bean, you need to get off of the coffee bean itself. So that would be when things like the herbal blends or going to caffeine will, or going to things like teas will actually help. So these are great tips. Thank you so much, Katie. You're welcome. We've got Dr. Mikhail Parsons standing by with some alternative food ideas. Dr. Parsons, any ideas for our caller? So you found out you're sensitive to coffee, and that's a big part of your social network. One of the things that you need to think about is why do you drink it? Is it more for the social aspect? Is it because it wakes you up? Is it because you just enjoy the taste? Each of those are going to have a different solution. So if it's a social thing, focus on the social aspect. Order a different type of beverage that you may not be sensitive to, or bring one that you can have, such as one of these coffee substitutes. These substitutes do not have coffee in them. They are often a whole grain base with chicory added, and these are readily available in most health food stores. If you're grabbing coffee because you need that pick-me-up, you need that boost of energy, or you need to get that to turn your brain on, that's a separate issue. What you need to do then is transition off the coffee, but add things in that are going to support healthy energy balance, such as a good B vitamin, making sure you're eating three meals a day that always includes a protein and a fat. Those are going to be things that can that are going to provide your body an opportunity to make its own energy so you don't have to rely on the fake false energy that you get from the caffeine. If you are wanting coffee because it's just part of a habit, sometimes breaking those habits is one of the hardest things to do because it's part of your morning routine. You can substitute that then for a hot cup of tea. It's more of that relaxation, giving your time focused in the morning, 
then the coffee part is just a piece of what you're going for, switch to green tea. Green tea is a great substitute and it has more health benefits than coffee does. Now, if you're using coffee because you need to poop, and yes, I said the word poop, that's another issue with another solution. As you transition the coffee out of your lifestyle, you need to maybe increase your fiber, and you're probably dehydrated because caffeine causes dehydration. So I'm gonna encourage you to boost up your water consumption and add in some fiber. Don't forget about exercise and eat those veggies, and you will sail through this loss of coffee because there is life after. Thanks, Dr. Mikhail Parsons, and to you, Katie Sweetrock. Thank you. It was a pleasure. We'll continue with Window on Well Street after the break, but may I encourage those of you watching who may have a family member, friend, or coworker experiencing similar health issues to forward the link below to them. And if you haven't had your immunoblood print, please learn more and get yourself tested. Remember, there's a hidden link between what you eat and how you feel. I'm Dr. Gabriela Cora, and we'll be right back.